How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Pokey Forward Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about our predictions for the Nintendo Direct, which is happening, uh, well, whenever you're seeing this, it could be tomorrow, or it could have been on the day when we're posting this, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to be doing our predictions real quick and just talking about, well, I guess even like Pokemon Day and stuff like that, because there's a lot of things happening in February this month. We're joined, as per usual, with our boy, our friend, our, our, our lad. I said boyfriend. Wow, that sounds weird. Either way, I'm joined by our, our guy... Uh, Cam, how you doing, Cam? <laughs> What's up, everybody? We got a big day ahead of us. Or we sure do. Before. We sure do. We have that, was... A, we have, that was really weird. Uh, but we have, a, we have a big day. We have a, we have a massive day uh, to go, which is uh, tomorrow or, again, whenever you're seeing this, on the 8th of February, we're going to have ourselves a Nintendo Direct. Um, and I want to point this out right, right away. And Cam, you can agree with this if you want to or you can disagree. But usually, if there's a Nintendo Direct... Pokemon is not going to be a part of it, um, because Pokemon does stuff separately. So I yeah, one hundred percent I agree with you. Yes, S- especially since we're in February. Normally, I, I like at the very least we would get it in say like a September direct or, or a uh, or an E three direct or like a Treehouse thing. But definitely this month, no, one hundred percent no news, not until the twenty seventh. Yeah. So that's the thing, because 27th, for those who do not know, if you're watching and if you don't know this information, the 27th is Pokemon Day. Uh, it's a day to celebrate Pokemon. I think it's the day that the original game is released or something like that. Um, yep. I, I, yeah, I think it's along those lines. So it's basically the day to celebrate all of Pokemon, right? Well, here's the thing. Pokemon Day is the specific day also when all the stuff gets announced, right? So Pokemon stuff, if there's game-related stuff, uh, TCG, Pokemon Go, all the shebang, everything, it all gets announced on Pokemon Day. That's the that's the big day for all this all this shit, right? So here's the thing though. We're going to talk about right now our predictions for the Nintendo Direct and also some of the stuff we might expect for Pokemon Day given that we're getting it direct right now. Um but also if there is anything Pokemon related today tomorrow I guess or you know uh, on the direct what it could be. So I guess let's start with our predictions for the direct itself. Cam, do you want to go ahead and tell me what is your prediction? Like what do you think is most likely going to be shown tomorrow? 100,000 uh, percent tears of the kingdom like it has yes. to be yeah. that 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 is literally the next big thing that's coming out unless tomorrow they reveal like hey we got a march and an april game tears of the kingdom right now is like the only as far as i only nintendo thing that we know for this entire year yeah. besides the the inevitable uh scarlet and violet dlc tears, tears of the kingdom is like the only thing that we have an actual release date for so yeah. we we're, we need a trailer because we we don't know anything about that game like anything yeah see it's actually interesting because tears of the kingdom is also if you think about it like gonna be the only big thing they have this year because what i heard is that the reason they pulled out of e3 because for those who do not know nintendo pulled out of three e3 i think jasmine mentioned it in the chat as well um, but the reason that the reason that was stated, I'm not sure if it was confirmed, but the reason that was stated was that they just didn't have enough of a big game lineup to justify showing up at E3. Like they didn't have. I heard games. the same thing. Yeah. So that is already a bad indication for Nintendo, but it could be it could mean one of two things, right? It's either a that they just don't have enough games with this specific year or this you know first quarter or whatever of the year, or the most likely scenario, which is, again, something Jasmine mentioned in chat earlier, which is they're probably prepping and leaving a lot of games that are supposed to be, you know, coming out or planned games and stuff like that for the next console, right? Because, right. I mean, when did the Switch came out in, like, 2017, dude? 2017. 2017. It's actually, isn't it literally in March going to be its at the anniversary of the Switch? it came out I think, yeah. on March 17th, unless I'm mistaken. I'm trying to remember this in my brain. But no, I'm pretty sure it was it, it, it was whatever whatever Breath of the Wild's release date was because that was it, it launched with the Switch that year. Yeah. So but it came out. So think about that, guys. It came out in 2017. So all of 2017, that's one year. Then you have 2018, that's two years, three years, four years, five years, six years. This is the seventh year of the Switch. It is crazy. Okay. It is crazy that the Switch has been out for seven years. Like, that feels insane. It's three more years from now, and that's going to be a decade. And like a decade of the Switch. Can, like, do you guys understand how crazy that really is if you, if you take a step back and you actually look at, you know, how fast time is going? Um, 
But that's the thing though. If, if it's going down, if we're leaving the switch in the past, right? Going into 2024 and stuff. I do wonder though, what the next direction is going to be for Nintendo. Right? Because I, me personally, I think that they aren't like, I know that the next console is coming. I don't know if it's going to be next year or 2025, but I do know that it's, they, I don't think they're going to drop the concept of the Switch. I just think they're going to take a more advanced approach to it and make like a, a stronger Switch, like the Switch 2, because yeah. they killed the 3DS for this console. And Nintendo, ever since like the Game Boy era, has always been you get your home console and your handheld and they exist yeah. side by side. And the Switch is literally both of these. So if they were to drop the whole concept of a portable home console, then they would have to make a new handheld, which I don't think they want to do, considering how successful the Switch is as a home and handheld. So I do think that we might stick with this handheld, you know, home era. We might just get like the Switch 2 or Switch Plus or yeah. just a stronger beefier switch that can handle stronger games and still be portable like the steam deck yeah yeah because i as far as i'm aware the steam deck is a better performing device just in general it is like it is much stronger which but see that's the, that's where i'm what i'm wondering though right like this is where kind of my whole thing with with what you know what is their direction uh going forward is because like even beyond let's say the switch what could they realistically do even to change things up Right, because like the reason, like the reason people buy a PlayStation or an Xbox is not the same way that people buy a a like a Nintendo console at least, right? Um, right. I feel like it's a bit different because when you look at like, let's be real here, right? Cam, you can agree on this. If you are like a regular consumer, like who just wants to play the the generic games, let's just say like that, like Call of Duty, FIFA, shit like that, right? You're not going to be your first choice isn't going to be a Nintendo Switch, right? No. Your first choice is going to be a PlayStation, Xbox, or a computer. For most regular people, it'll be an Xbox or a PlayStation because that's the easiest way to access video games without all the hassles of building your own computer, getting the right shit, and also let's not forget a decent computer does cost more than a console. I mean, nowadays, to be fair though, if you're smart, you can probably get a good gaming PC for less than the cost of a PlayStation Five, but. Like, you know, those consoles, they, they exist in this kind of their own vacuum, right, of space. And then you have Nintendo in its own little bubble where the reason people buy Nintendo products or Nintendo consoles is to play Nintendo games. Because you can't get Mario, Pokemon, Zelda, uh, shit, uh, Xenoblade, uh, Fire Emblem. You can't get those anywhere besides the Switch or, sorry, the, the, the Nintendo console, consoles. Or, like, if you want to stretch it, I guess you could say you get on mobile for a few games, but that's literally as far as you can go with it, right? It's very limited scope uh, in terms of what's actually available out there for uh, for you to do when it comes to Nintendo. Like, none of that's, like, it's not available anywhere else, whereas the stuff that you can get on, on PlayStation, oftentimes, besides the exclusives, uh, and on Xbox, it's usually available on PC already, right? Like, the stuff you see on yep. those is already available through with within all three of those, like, you know, uh, platforms, so to say. Whereas Nintendo is just kind of like it's very honed in on its own thing, which is why they haven't had to rely on uh, what you might call it. They haven't not had to rely on you know Call of Duty, FIFA, and that kind of stuff um, to to be able to to survive, right? Because they just sell their own shit. Their first party titles take priority over their their you know third party and second party titles. I would I would say right. Um, All right. I mean, not denying, though, that Nintendo has make, made strides. I know FIFA is on the Switch. I know because I play it, actually. <laughs> I play it on the Switch. Don't judge me. Yes, I play FIFA, but I don't spend money on it. Um, but, you know, that's on there. And there is, there is like, you know, more of a push to put, like, a lot of these games on there. But realistically, you will play those better on PC or PS5 or Xbox, you know. It's usually going to be yeah. better on those consoles, right? I, I completely agree. I actually saw that there's a, a game out there called Project Ring Code, made developers of Danganronpa. I don't know if you ever heard or seen Danganronpa. It's like I a know, mystery yeah, know, solving know. game. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. Uh, he, he said in an interview that the reason why the game is Switch exclusive is because he knows that if it was on another console, it would die. And he, he has a point, because I don't know if you've... Uh, 
you you've seen what is it triangle strategy or octopath traveler yes, yes or yes, yes, yes. Uh, those games were performing extremely well yeah. on the switch and yeah. then they didn't sell well on other consoles yeah. and square enix they had two strategy rpgs uh i, I believe one was called like dl failed chronicles or something like that and the other one was i i, I don't I, was a triangle strategy or something it, it was there were two strategy rpgs that both released one was a switch exclusive and one was multi-platform and a multi-platform game completely underperformed and sold because it was available on all these different platforms which is not what you would expect but the one that was a switch exclusive it had that switch exclusive brand around it and because of that it sold it like like did extremely well because yeah. of that so if nintendo games were on other consoles they wouldn't be as popular or sell as well because they have that um that brand name of you can only get this on the switch or the yeah. wii or the ds you can't get this on like the psp if that were still here or theme or things like that mm -hmm. so yeah one of the one of the main reasons why switch the switch games or nintendo games in general sell so well is because they're exclusive mm -hmm. you have to get this console to play the next zelda game or the next yeah. mario game yeah. or even pokemon for that uh that like reason even yeah. though pokemon is like a second party it's still a it's nintendo ip to, yeah, it's exclusive yeah. to nintendo consoles no matter what so yeah yeah it still has that that uh that nintendo brand on it and because of that it will sell well which is like the moment nintendo brings like a new ip into the mix it's gonna blow up because nintendo splatoon. it's nintendo splatoon yeah splatoon splatoon is still a relatively new ip and it's yeah. it's still performing extremely well Animal because is another it's one that they 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 that they brought that to the fold um yeah there's there's, there's a, anything nintendo makes i mean not always to be fair there are a few duds as well there's actually a lot of duds if we're gonna be honest like arms for example they try to make that into a thing that kind of crashed and burns which is the main the main reason the main reasons why arm arms failed was because they were they released it and then revealed smash a year later so yeah 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 that and there's another one smash that's another one of their their big boys right they have a yeah. lot of, but that's the thing nintendo has a lot of those but the problem is whenever they don't put any of those out right like the reason why like let's be real here the reason why we get so excited for nintendo stuff is because it's so irregular right like Think about this. When the hell did you last see uh, people losing their minds over, like, a game as much as people did whenever, like, Smash Ultimate was announced? Like, oh, just remember uh, that fucking reveal? Like, the only time I can think of uh, is this, the people that simp for the Blizzard freaking games or whatever, like, Overwatch and, and World of Warcraft. Like, maybe those people simping for it or whatever. But, like, Nintendo, whenever they do, like, a big, big reveal, right? Like, a big boy reveal. Like, Everybody loses their fucking mind. The internet blows up for that for that day or two. It's all about that shit, right? Yeah. Um, but I feel like the, the, example, the biggest contender mm -hmm. is Metroid Dread when that got revealed because that was like I think it had been over a decade and a half before uh, since Metroid Four. I think that was what Fusion came out and then Dread because yeah. the two line Metroids are like the main line installments. Mm -hmm. And uh, Metroid Prime is like a spinoff prequel s. So yeah, people were excited for Prime Four wherever that game is now. But when the moment Dread oh, got announced, they the were void. like, "Yeah, it's literally in the void." But when they were revealed Dread, people were like, "Holy crap! They're uh, they're actually revealing the next like story mainline story installment into the series that's been pretty much dead for almost a decade or over a decade actually." So I remember people were losing it over that. That was like huge when they announced that, and before that, it, it was Smash. Yeah, but see, that's the thing though. It's like Nintendo and their reveals usually has like this level of excitement that, like, like let's be real, who the fuck watched the last like PlayStation like showcase thing that they did? And if you I watched did, it, but it was boring. It, that's what I mean. It's fucking lame. I mean, sure, do we have a lot of bad directs? Yes, yes, we fucking do. Okay. Oh we yes, had we do. A lot of bad ones. But even the fucking lead up, okay, just the lead up to a direct is more hyped than a whole presentation from another company. I don't know what it is. It's just a Nintendo effect, okay? 
that it's just it's just that they are just so much more like they bring the hype in a different way right like nintendo announcements bring the hype in a way that no one else does you know and they just they just like they just mwah, do it so fucking perfectly um and that's exactly kind of like why when i when i think about you know what will the next console be and this is what we were talking about earlier right uh I'm, i keep wondering dude what can they do because the only way that i can see this going forward cam is like like look at this look at it like this way right we've kind of peaked as far as it comes to technology with game game like consoles right yeah and what i mean by that is like you know like you know in terms of what they can achieve with the actual product itself um like how do i explain this like what they can do with the product itself like for example with the switch you have the joy cons and stuff cool feature right you can take your you know controllers you can put them on so you can play handheld blah blah all this crap that's sick right but realistically, what more can they do where it isn't just going to be a gimmick, right? Because the Joy-Cons aren't a gimmick. It's a functional, actual, logical thing to the console. If you want to take them out and play, you know, in, in, in docked mode, there's a reason for it. If you want to, you know, play handheld, there's a reason for it, right? They're like, there's a, there's a reason behind it. And it isn't just a tacky thing that's just there to look cool. And the thing with Nintendo is they've always tried to make these consoles that are a little bit out there trying like weird shits. Right, like for example, if you think about the Wii, the Wii is a crazy success. Like it, it, it's it crazy. was. If you really look at the Wii, it's it's a crazy fucking console. It's so insane that it did so well, and that 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 you know such a concept even worked. And then of course you know that we had the Wii U. We don't talk about that one, but you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is um, that like, if you look at it from the outside, Nintendo is the ones who keep trying to make their consoles a bit different. Whereas PlayStation, Xbox. What they do is just make the same console over and over again, but with better hardware, right? That's all it is. All right. like, let's be real here. PlayStation fucking, look at a PlayStation 1 and keep going forward. And all that changes is that just the regular standard shit that happens over the years, that just happens in all parts of the technology, uh, just it gets improved. And But the, the base idea of the console, the base structure of it, the base concept behind it is still the same, right? A PlayStation, right. what do you do? You have controllers, plug them into a little box, play play CDs, right? PlayStation 5, same shit. You have a fucking console, you either plug a fucking, you know, cable into it to charge your controller, or you use wirelessly, and it's a box that plays your games with CD or without CD. You know what I mean? And, like, there are gimmicks around it, like somebody mentioning right now in the chat, VR, that's true. But, again, it's not a fundamentally PlayStation, you know, thing it's like it's there yes it's a playstation it's like they, they make that but they weren't the first to do it right and it's not like an inherently exclusive thing to them like you know like vr consoles existed before playstation did it on pc and stuff like that whereas if you look at nintendo um they try to be a little bit more goofy with it they try to do weird shit all the time and that's where i'm wondering what the fuck can they do next <laughs> like yeah, i'm like what, what can they genuinely do next like what in what way like what in in the in the world, dude? Could they actually do next? Like I cannot I cannot imagine mm. in my head. I know people will say VR and blah blah blah. Honestly, after like what was the the, the console called? Like the My Boy or whatever, which failed. The Labo. Like, no 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 no. They had like a like a VR console they made uh in like the 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 nineties or some shits, which was horrible. For oh. Me. Uh, no, I I, I don't know. I wasn't born then. <laughs> virtual Boy, the Virtual Virtual Boy, Virtual Boy, Virtual Boy. I just remembered it. Virtual Boy. I figured it out. I didn't look at chat, okay? I don't think anybody in chat's mentioned it yet, but by the time this stream catches up, it doesn't matter. Either way, what I'm trying to say is, like, they like goofy shit. They try, like, trying new and weird stuff. And I fucking love that they do that. But I really wonder, you know, are they going to finally settle in, right, Cam? Like, are they going to settle in and all we're going to keep getting is, in, you know, the same thing that PlayStation and Xbox do, right? Which is instead of it being, like, a brand new thing every single time, you know, every new generation of a Nintendo console being a brand new you know, test of a brand new idea of a console, are they going to finally settle in and just be like, the Nintendo Switch is the future for the rest of, the, like, you know, for as long as we can think. For Nint like, Nintendo, they this is the talk about it like it is. Well, because that would make sense, because I don't see what they can do more. Besides, like, you know, like, because it's, 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 it's the perfect console, if you really think about it. Right? It's the perfect console. It combines the two things that, you know, like you said, people want from Nintendo. A, a, a portable console and a home console. 
It gives you both of those in one. But the question is, you know, can they, are they going to think of something brand new? But if they think of something brand new, then, you know, it, you know, it doesn't work, right? Because the switch is those two consoles. So they would have to either split them again to be able to, you know, maybe make the home console different in its own way and the other, you know, the, the handheld one different in its own way. But that's unlikely to happen because they have all of it in a singular package now. So it's yeah. the best of both worlds, right? As, as Aki says. So the only question then is, what can they really do? Well, the most likely thing is, like you said, upgrade the motherfucker. Like make it better, yeah. stronger, and, you know, just run faster. Just make a stronger Switch because the Switch, I believe, has the biggest install base of any console in the world right now. Like definitely not everybody has a PS5. Not everybody has an Xbox Series S. But I, the I Switch, have, dude, whether have, it's a... I have fucking, if I count my, my girls' uh, Switch, we have four Switches, dude. <laughs> Exactly. Like, I have a lot of switches at this point. I own two. My brother and sisters have their own Switch Lite. My stepdad has a Switch. So there's a total of Switch, six Switches in this house currently. And this, like I said, almost everybody in the world has a Switch. So here's, like like you said, like like I said, they're going to definitely just make a beefier, like, Switch that can handle a lot of things because Scarlet and Violet, definitely and there are a lot of other games they are really really good but we're being held back by uh by the switch itself and it's obvious that if generation 10 were to still be on the switch they would they they would have to release it for like i don't know switch plus or switch next or whatever they decide to call it switch because Scarlet and Violet is just like the Sun and Moon effect where the game looks really good, but it's being held back by the console itself. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah like exactly. at this point, the game, the games are outdoing the console. Like they the, the games are they need the console. At this point, Nintendo needs to step up because the developers are starting to go pat go far and beyond the hardware that the Switch can handle. So it's very obvious that the next thing they need is just to make a stronger switch that way the the third party developers that are still making switch games but don't want to like develop for this new console they can make this new switch reverse compatible to where it can still handle old switch games so you don't feel like locked out or be like dang i want to play the new game but i don't want to get an i don't want to have to get the new system to so i can't play all my old games kind of like how do we i believe the wii you could still play wii games or how the new 3DS can obviously still play DS and yeah. uh, 3DS games, but there are still some exclusive games for that. Yeah. I feel like if you want to play Gen 10 or the next like game after Tears of the Kingdom, you'll have to get this new Switch. But you can still go back and play like Let's Go or Sword and Shield or God forbid BDSP on your new Switch, essentially. Yeah. Actually, it's it's uh, interesting because Blank Checks says something very important, which is they already have the Switch Lite, which is exclusively handheld, so they wouldn't need to make a secondary handheld exclusive, which is, yeah, that, 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 that's, that's actually that's true. correct. And like you just said, Cam, it, it perfectly makes sense, right, that if they make this new console, then there will be games that are exclusive to that console because they literally cannot run on the original Switches, right? Like, let's say they literally call it Switch 2, right? If they were to call it literally Switch 2, and that's now the more beefy let's say two times the power of a regular switch, right? And right. then they simply make it so that, hey, there's certain games that will run on both. You know, so if you still have a switch, don't worry, you still have a few games. But then there will be games that will run only on the on the new console because they literally will not be able to not it's not just just not strong enough to run it on a regular switch. Uh, giving you a reason to actually buy a switch too. The same way that it works with like a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation 5, right? Sure, PlayStation 5 right. is better uh, than a PlayStation 4, but there's a shit ton of games that you can, you know, still play on both, right? There are exclusives like uh, the new God of War, for example, and the Horizon game. Actually, no, I think the Horizon game, the newest Horizon was on both. I could be wrong though, but... I believe it was. I think it was on both, yeah. But see, that's what I mean, right? Like, uh, I don't know about the God of War one, but usually like, you know... No, that, they, that was PS5 still, exclusive. They, yeah, so usually though, they will have like, you know, certain games, even new ones that come out, that will still be available on the old console in terms of PS4, even back in the day with PS3 and PS5, uh, PS3 and PS4 as well. And then it's the same thing here. It's just we're gonna get like this kind of um, I don't know how to say it. Like 
Pokemon's going to kind of become a little bit more homogenized, if that makes makes any sense, right? Like it's going to become like a little bit more, you know, or like, no, sorry, uh, Nintendo is going to become a little bit more homogenized when it comes to the consoles. Instead of trying to do wacky new shit all the time, they're just going to give us Switch. Like that's the future of, 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 of Nintendo. You know, it's just going to be Switch consoles that keep reiterating on themselves. And maybe Switch 2 will do something different in terms of how it looks and everything, and they might give it a whole new Add theme. themes. Wait, what do you say? I said finally add themes. Oh yeah, dude. What, dude? There's so many things that the Switch doesn't do right. Where like I, I am so happy I have a hacked Switch where I can, you know, change just sort of things around as I feel like it. Um. <laughs> oh, by the way, Devin, thank you for the five dollar donation. Uh, they literally did this with the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Yes, yeah. that is true. That is true. Every 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 handheld had an enhanced version yeah. of it, and yeah. the the OLED doesn't count because it's just a better screen. Nintendo like, DS, 3DS. Same shit. Yeah. And even with the DS, it had the it had the DS. They DS literally Lite, did this the Game Boy, Game Boy, Game Boy color. color. And then Wii Wii U, but we don't talk about Wii U. So, so oh, yeah, yeah. We don't talk about Wii U. <laughs> no, they, they do that, but the difference is, right? That that unlike you know, Xbox or PlayStation, they don't stick to it, you know? They always do something different after after like like two generations of a specific console, right? So right. like like you said, right? Yeah, we had Game Boy and then we had Game Boy Color. We had Game Boy Advanced or Game Boy SP. I kind of all that, all that shit fits into a single bubble. But the, once those ended, they moved on to the DS, right? That was the next thing. And then after the DS, it was the 3DS. And after the 3DS, there is no more DSs. It, it, it ends there, right? Maybe you can count the 2DS if you want to, but that's just the 3DS without the 3D aspect of it. But like... You know, then there is no more DSs. There is no more that version of handhelds. Now we have the Switch only, and the same thing for the main, like the main consoles. You had like the old school ones with uh, what you might call it. Um, you know, like Nintendo sixty four, um, Dreamcast. I think that was one of the one. Uh, the GameCube, for example. Um, GameCube, yeah. yeah. The GameCube. The, SNES. The, yep, SNES. The Wii. Um, the Wii U. As much as you know, people like to shit on it. Um, and as you keep going, right, it just, you know, they, they just kind of re like, you know, it just doesn't stay as one singular thing. They always try kind of weird new naming schemes, new stuff, right? Like the Wii was very special at the time when it came out. Um, and it goes the same way, you know, for what you call it for now as well. It's why I'm thinking like, you know, what if the switch Two, right? just doesn't end up being as successful, are we going to see like, you know, in another five, six, seven years, are they going to drop the Switch and do another new thing? Or like, what's the plan? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I'm wondering what the yeah. next thing is going to be. But uh, yeah, we've been on about the console for a while now. So let's move on to a different subject, which is <laughs> what we're actually expecting to see. Because uh, we already talked about that a little bit. You are expecting, of course, Breath of the Wild um, to finally to get a proper, I guess, more more footage. I mean, do we yeah. have a release date? I don't know. If, do we have a release date? Yes, we don't. Yeah, it's Do it's we? it's May May fifth, oh, okay. I believe. May fifth. Oh wait, wait, that's that's a day before uh, your birthday. You're <laughs> is when uh, no, my my birthday's in October. Oh no no no! But before my girls, uh, like um, my, uh, oh. my fiance, before before her, like I know. Birthday. Uh, I was wrong. It's May twelfth. Oh May twelfth. Okay. Well, that's a week okay. after. But either way, um, so what should I call it? That's a guaranteed one tomorrow. One million percent. Uh, that's happening tomorrow. But then I'm wondering what else could they actually show, right? Like, what are some possible yeah. things that could happen? Uh, for a fact, we're not expecting Pokemon. Okay, no Pokemon. No, definitely not. Because uh, there is again Pokemon Day, so we're not expecting that. So yeah. what, I, I I have other things I can say, but what what are you expecting? What am I expecting? I'm expecting uh, Splatoon three DLC. I'm expecting. Um, a Mario game that's just like not like a big Mario game, like a small little Mario game, maybe you know, like a small little spin-off type title, you know. Uh, and when I say Mario, it doesn't it doesn't mean that it's going to be specific. It could be like a a Wario type game or or a Waluigi game or you know a sports game again for Mario because they just like making those all the fucking time. Uh, it's going to be something along those lines, is what I think, right? Um, but beyond that, I'm I'm just assuming it's going to be a a mishmash of like third party titles you know what i mean like a lot of like a lot of like third party titles from you know outside studios not a lot of first party i'm not expecting a lot of first party just given the fact that they haven't really done jack shit for the last like few years um what was the last big thing besides if besides pokemon right 
uh fire emblem just came out before, and before that it was xenoblade. bayonetta oh yeah ba- yeah bayonetta, Xenob- yeah so it was yeah, so we had bayonetta xenoblade uh fire emblem and if we go really far back we had kirby Animal, like oh yeah the kirby one too yeah we also had uh animal crossing but the thing is it's like it's been a while now since most of those besides bayonetta i guess and fire emblem those were more recent but like I do feel, though, that the output has slowed down substantially compared to what it was back in, like, uh, you know, 2017, 2018, 2019. Um, I feel like it has slowed down over the last three years or so. It's just gotten a little bit slower and slower. Because I know I know that you guys, you guys remember most of the directs we've had over the last few years have been pretty shit. <laughs> I remember everybody complaining that they just, they just didn't announce enough hype stuff. People got excited. They watched the direct, and it's like, well... Where is our stuff? Where is our shit? Where are our games? So I personally am saying, I think Splatoon 3 DLC, I think, well, obviously Breath of the Wild, uh, Mario spin-off game. Um, what else? I don't know. That's, that's, the, that's the three I'm thinking of. But beyond that, it's just going to be a mishmash of, you know, small stuff, I, I'm guessing. But yeah, what do you think, Cam? Well, I, I, I do want to point this out. And the, the chat can correct me on this, but... We know how every direct has like a three point formula. Yep. There's always a big opening game to get you excited. Like yeah. for September, they opened up with uh they opened up with Fire Emblem. I mean, yeah, they opened up with Fire Emblem. I think Breath of uh, Tears of the Kingdom was the middle portion or the end portion, and then Pikmin Four uh was like the the middle or end I, I don't remember i think those two are switched or they happen like side by side but every direct has a opener to get you hooked on whatever it is to make you think oh, okay this is going to be great because we got this strong opener and then we get like some some indie titles some ports some small games in between that part and then there is a middle game that comes out and you're like okay this is huge and then they do a uh they put some more games in between and then there's like a big closer or they do the, we have one more announcement. And that's like the big secret WTF. I didn't expect them to reveal yeah. this group blow, boom blow two title. So I think that I, I really hope that the opener title is tears of the kingdom. I yeah, don't, I, I don't want it too. to be the, yeah, I don't want it to be the ending. Mm-hmm. Like, because it like, if it's the ending title, that to me implies that, they don't have anything like like they they have yeah like plans yeah if they're riding on tears of the kingdom to carry them from now until may then that that really goes to show that they don't have like nintendo game freak may well definitely we know they have something because of the dlc but for nintendo personally if tears of the kingdom is like the big thing that they are banking on carrying through the entire like ser- like uh, season up until May it's it's very concerning me to me personally but I do think that t- I hope that Tears of the Kingdom is going to be either a middle or a beginning and I expect them to show us Pikmin 4 because I don't know if you were paying attention in the last uh direct but they revealed Pikmin 4 yeah, which yeah, was revealed that. Yeah, all, that that game was was a thing since the Wii U era, like all the way back in like 2015 or 14. They revealed that, and at one point they said it was almost done, and then the Wii U died, so the game just never saw the light of day, and they revived it for the Switch. So I hope that they show us gameplay of that, and uh, Metroid Prime Four, maybe, maybe not, definitely not. That I, I don't, be... I don't even. That would be, oh, that would be so hyped, dude. Because Metroid Prime is the only series of Metroid which I've actually played. So I would just fuck it. That would actually genuinely get me fucking, like, screaming. Because, dude, th- th- how many years has it been now? So what, since 2017? Metroid Prime 4 was revealed in 20... 20- I-, I re-looked it up while I was editing a short little video for YouTube, which is out, by the way. You guys can check it out. But <laughs> it was revealed back in 2017. Holy shit. So Summer it's as old, dude. It's as old as the Switch, dude. Yes, it, <laughs> it's, it's as, as old. old as the Switch. Oh, that's so. That's like seven years. That's so bad. That the game was so revealed. Bad. Yeah, it was revealed in 2017. It restarted development in 2019 or 2020. I believe it was 2019. They they announced that they had they just scrapped the entire game and redid it, like redoing it from the ground up. And we we ever since then we just haven't heard a single thing about it. That's really. 
that's really bad. Like actually, if you really think about it. Oh. Yeah, it, it, it's scary. It's really scary to think about. That's oh. why a lot, every time you ask them, people like, do you expect to see Metroid Prime 4? The answer is always no. But it's been four years since they restarted development. It so true. It's been a while. And and to be fair, if we're reaching the end cycle of, of the regular Switch, then I yeah. feel like it's about time. I mean, shit, bro. At this point, I would be happy if I could just get like a like a, a little teaser or some shit. You know what I mean? Like just something a lot of people to do. be like, you know, just something to be like, the game's coming out in 2025. I'd be like, you know what? That's better than nothing. I'll take it. You know, sure, it's two years from now, but I'll fucking take it. You know, it's better than nothing. So, <laughs> yeah, you see, I, I, I don't think Nintendo's ever announced a game uh, and gave it a release window two years in advance. That's more of a Sony thing to do. But I feel like if, if they were to give it a release know. window, they'll be like, they'll, they'll, they'll either say like spring next year. I mean, hey, make, they hey to be put... fair, to be fair, though, Cam, they did give us that because they announced Metroid Prime Four, and then it, seven years later, it still hasn't happened. So technically, anything's possible. Yeah, but they they didn't they didn't give it a release. Window. I know, I know, they just I know. Said, no, I'm, just, I'm just goofing. I'm just goofing. <laughs> I know, I know. But um, but uh, small things. I'm expecting uh, maybe uh, uh, since the Mario movie's coming out soon. Oh yeah, maybe... promo about that. Yeah, they, they they might do a little promo about that. I really, for I want them to uh just give us a new Mario game to like tie into or to get us excited. Maybe even port, I don't know, another Mario game that we just forgot about. Uh, maybe make a new Wario game, like you said. I I really like Wario games; they're pretty good. Um, I doubt they're gonna do anything for Animal Crossing. They kind of just dropped that after that last big update with the DLC for that. So I'm not expecting anything on that. Uh, maybe Star Allies, not Star Allies. What what is it? The Forgotten Land. Maybe yeah. they can get that DLC. Uh, definitely, like you said, Splatoon DLC. The Xenoblade DLC. If Arrow was here, he he would definitely oh, yeah. touch upon that. But like <laughs> the uh, the Xenoblade DLC, we need to get the next batch of it because it's been a while. And the DLC, there's I think like the last part of it is going to be like a giant story thing. Which for those in the chat that have played Xenoblade uh, Chronicles Three, you know that the story is super good and. I can't wait for the next like actual DLC batch. I'm, I might actually get it because I don't. I'm not. I wasn't gonna get the current one because it was just like new weapons and stuff, which was pretty okay for me. But once you beat the game, there's kind of like no reason to get it. So I'm expecting that. Like I, I, other than that, I don't really see them doing anything big. But we do need just something. I know that Arek said it's gonna talk about the first half of games releasing in 2023 mm -hmm. but we do need like i don't know something just something to let us know that hey you at least have more than just tears of the kingdom to yeah. show because like i said that that is as far as i know besides like a few small things like the that kirby port for uh i think it came out on a Wii that's getting re uh re-released for the switch mm -hmm. oh yeah like uh Pokemon Abel says Mario Kart 8 uh, DLC course is still a thing and they still haven't revealed all the new courses for that but outside of uh, like small DLC updates we don't know anything I do think that Tears of the Kingdom is the only game with a release date yeah. like it's the only, only game boy. with it's a only the, it's the only big boy thing that we know of everything else yeah, is kind of unknown like we're both excited for the Scar Scarlet and Violet DLC but that's just DLC. Like, it's not a new game. No. It's just a big update to an existing game. Yeah. So, yeah, game like Tears of the Kingdom is quite literally, as far as we know, besides small things, the only big game that Nintendo has right now that has a proper release date that we know for sure is coming out. And the scary thing about that is that we still don't know anything about that game. And it's their only big hitter for this year. That's true. So, yeah, that 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 that's where I am right now. I'm still super excited for tomorrow because yeah, anything can happen. They 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 could freaking revive Star Fox, get like give they us a new anything. Star Fox, or <laughs> yeah, they 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 could literally like revive that one franchise. They can give us Mother Three tomorrow. Like who knows? That's unlikely, but but you know, <laughs> but you never know. It, yeah, anything can you happen. You never know. I mean, because we're 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 at that point where we don't know. Like you like usually we can say, hey. They we we can say for certainty something that's happening, but this direct this year in general, we have no idea outside of Zelda. No, that's true. 
I don't know. I guess, like, I don't know. There's really not much else to say in terms of predictions, I guess. We kind of already know. No. Breath of the Wild and just mostly DLC updates. We don't really know any big other games they might do. We'll just have to wait and see, I guess, as time goes. Um, which that I guess is, is a perfect point to cap that uh, discussion off. And let's just have a quick overview of the rest of this month, um, which is the big one. We're gonna have, again, we're gonna do a podcast and everything when when it happens, and you know, after it happens, and all that stuff. Because it, literally, Pokemon Day is the day before our uh, last podcast of this month. Um, it's on the, the freaking twenty seventh, which is a Monday, and then we're gonna do a podcast on the twenty eighth. The day after, so we're gonna have a lot of shit to talk about then, you know. But um, I guess let's just cap that off since you guys are here for Pokemon. Um, Pokemon for for Pokemon Day. Uh, just a quick thingy of what we're expecting then, uh, and we're just gonna cap it off there. We don't really, you know, drag it out because I don't really know if there's much else to say about the Nintendo stuff. Uh, Cam, I mean, is there anything important you think is worth mentioning or? Nah. All right, there we go. Well, let's cap it off with uh, Pokemon Day predictions. Um, 27th of February, um, not too far away now, and what we're expecting is something uh, along the lines of this. At least from me, and Cam, you can say yours, but I'm gonna just say it like this. Pokemon Day, 100,000% DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're gonna probably see a spin-off game of some sort, because this is a DLC year, and DLC years are similar to third version years. Uh, like when Emerald came out, or when, you know, Platinum came out, or Black and White 2. Like... Or even like Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon and those kind of years. When it's a year where there's DLC or third versions, that usually also is the same year where we get a lot of spin-off games. That tends to be the case, right? Uh, so right. I'm expecting some kind of spin-off game. I'm leaning in the direction of it being... I'm no... I mean, we've talked about this, Cam, but I'm starting to more feel like we might get a Rangers game. Um, really? Yes, yes. In a weird way, I, I am feeling... You. Yes, you've convinced me. I believe, and even chat convinced me. I have a feeling we might be getting Rangers. Um, and I don't know how the fuck they would pull it off. You know, what way, how they would change the mechanics of it. But I think we might see Rangers. Um, like a, a Rangers type game. Uh, the other one that's a highly possible one is the new Detective Pikachu game. Uh, as being mentioned in chat as well. Um, a brand new Detective Pikachu. We, you know, fair enough. I'm going to be real. The first one was boring. It was hands down boring i didn't even finish it it was just boring it wasn't i just watched even, tyranitar to do a dude, playthrough it wasn't even it wasn't even a game it was a walking simulator it was a clicking simulator it was literally a clicking simulator and it just wasn't even a fun clicking simulator it was so boring oh i just didn't i did not think the first detective Pikachu game was good whatsoever i really hope they can do it better with detective picture 2 given how many years it's been in development we'll have to wait and see but I do think DLC, Rangers, Detective Pikachu, and maybe another spin-off. Because I think we got two spin-offs at one point in the same year. What was that again, Cam? Was was did we did we get did we get Mystery Dungeon and Snap in the same year? Or was that No, they, you know? they, they were a year apart. Okay, who who but... was in the same year? Because I know we had a lot of games in the same year. Like Snap came out at the same time as what else? Was it Oh wait, wait, I remember now. So it was Snap. Isle of Armor, Crown Tundra, and Cafe Remix. And Unite came out at the end of that year, I think. Unite. Well. Yes. That's five games. Okay? Think about that. Sure, two of those is DLC. But still, almost like, well, three brand new games and two DLC. So five products. All in the same year. Okay? So the possibility of there being DLC plus, you know, a, a Rangers game or, you know, a Rangers spinoff, whatever, uh, and some other small spinoff type shit is highly possible. So I'm, that's what I'm saying. Cam, do you have any, any further input on that or any of like, your prediction, I guess? No, my, my, mine's pretty much the exact same. I know we're, we're guaranteed a new DLC, def, definitely. But in terms of spinoff games, I want Ranger. I can't really yeah. pre like there, there's no other thing unless like people in the comments are saying they choose to remake Explorers of Sky next since they, they're, they're, they're like re just remaking. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're just remaking. Uh, like random rangers games they can just remake explorers of sky next i never actually played that i heard it's like one of the best games so they can do that pokemon they, they can re reveal sleep since we just got an update that the game is not dead but i don't really see why people kind of want to yeah. do a have a sleep monitor app <laughs> so I, I, I think <laughs> yeah. 
I think Pokemon, Pokemon, Sleep. Pokemon Sleep is gonna Pokemon Sleep is gonna go through the, the effect that Digimon Survive was because Digimon Survive was like a a, a visual novel. But like it was delayed so many times that people got this like idea that it was gonna be like this open world amazing game when it was just a visual novel. I feel like Pokemon Sleep is gonna be the exact same thing. Like pe- like people that don't know what it really is are gonna think like it's gonna be this super awesome game about this new sleep Pokemon that's like causing people to sleep. And then when it comes out, people are gonna be like, it's just a sleep monitor app. I thought this was going to be like the, the the next like I don't know mainline game. It's gonna like the, we're gonna get like Musharna legendaries and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> what even is Pokemon? I mean, what what did they even think when they were like, like what even what even is Pokemon Sleep? What even was it supposed to be? Oh my! Apparently, God. in Japan, like sleep monitoring apps are like a huge deal, and Pokemon wanted to capitalize on like uh a sleep monitoring app with like pokemon slapped on it and people are gonna be like holy crap this game's like like uh moms and little kids are gonna be like yo i pikachu is helping me sleep at night it's gonna be really cool but like oh, heck yeah, besides that <laughs> yeah besides that like it, it's not it, it's not as big as we are thinking like i'm pretty sure that we our our countries have sleep monitoring apps but it's not as big here in the U.S. or where you are as it probably is in, like, Japan because in Japan, those apps are huge. Like, everybody has one. But here, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Detective Pikachu 2, I'm pretty sure that game only exists because of the success of the movie because, like yeah. you said, the game wasn't that good. No, it, 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 it wasn't that good. Yeah, but, like, bad. the movie was successful. So... I don't know. I would and almost the, the, argue, dude, that the 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 first game is one of the worst Pokemon spinoffs of all time. Like, you know, it's funny. I genuinely the think first. I think Pokemon Pinball is better. Okay. Pokemon <laughs> Pinball is pretty fun. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but like the 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 Detective Pikachu is in a weird spot story wise because mm-hmm. I don't know if you if you like you say you never completed the original game. The original game no, I ends. Really. I, I think I I think I might have watched somebody play the rest of it because I just didn't feel like playing it but yeah i i, I, I watched how ran entire two's playthrough <laughs> it was it was pretty funny but like the original game ends on a, a on like a huge cliffhanger but the movie can, uh, the movie like continues from that cliffhanger and just revolves the plot like like the game was hinting at mewtwo but the movie just outright ended that in that the game's like storyline and then concluded like the mysteries that the game left behind so detective like the fact that when they announced detective pikachu i was like huh like the the, uh, the movie i was like huh okay and then when when they announced the sequel i was like well that's weird because the the movie concluded the game's plot and then any like it, it cleared up any plot holes for a potential like sequel yeah for that game to happen so unless they like introduce a new mystery the sequel well, just wouldn't would make sense because would probably be the most likely thing, right? Yeah, because the the sequel literally, like the the movie, just outright destroyed any plot hole that the video game had introduced. So I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I like like Rock Storm. Imagine Dark Ride becomes the mascot of Pokemon Sleep. Oh, that would, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yo, uh, giving nightmares since 2007, boys. Let's go. It's oh, like Cresselia in Dark Rise game. You gotta, you gotta help them wake up little Japanese kids from <laughs> oh, nightmares. No. That just sounds wrong. <laughs> what the fuck. You gotta, oh. you gotta like jump, jump into their dreams and like help them with like the uh, what's that? What's that feather that Cresselia has? Like the the dream feather that you get to yeah, like uh, like, um, uh, what is it called again? Like, crescent wing or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh my! You gotta God. just like save them. <laughs> I mean, they could always, I mean, we are talking about, we, we, you know, we're talking about like, oh, what could they do? What's the likely scenario, blah, blah, you know, of them. We're talking about a lot of existing spinoffs, but let's not forget that they could always do a brand new thing that they haven't done before. Yeah, that's true. You know? Like we, we're talking about like Mystery Dungeon, Rangers, you know, whatever. They could always do something different. I mean, think about it. Even if you actually look at Detective Pikachu, that was a whole new thing whenever that happened. It was right? a new IP. It was a new IP. Um, Pokemon was a new IP when that happened. It's been, it's been ages now, but you know, 
That was a new IP when that happened. Uh, Unite is a new thing as well, right? Like they can always do just something brand new that we just do not expect, like that we just do not see coming whatsoever. Um, they can always do that. That's the thing. They, there's always a possibility they might do something whack, you know, wacky and weird that's just kind of, you know, out there, so to say. But again, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of possibilities, but we have jack shit to work with right now in terms of information. And also, I will say this though, Cam, you know, we keep talking about like, oh, DLC this year, DLC this year, DLC this year. But can I be real with you? What? I have this weird feeling, like this weird feeling ever since we had like BDSP and Legends Arceus. So ever since what, 2021, I've had this weird feeling inside my guy, okay? Of like almost this, this dread, this fear I feel whenever a Pokemon day is coming up or a Pokemon presents is happening because anything can happen now, okay? Like BDSP and Legends Arceus, their announcements shook things up in an insane way. I don't know, I don't know if you guys understand this in chat or people who, who follow Pokemon. I don't know if you understand, but when that, was, when that was announced, I lost my mind because we expected there to be a BDSP announcement. We expected, you know, Diamond Pearl remakes. That was a given. But they hit us with a double game release with BDSP and Legends Arceus. Two big games, mainline releases in the same freaking time span. Okay, like in the same, like, you know, in the same, sorry, in the same presents within a short time span. That is insane. They've never done that before. Like, the only time they've ever even released Pokemon games with a short, like, distance, distance between them was Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Emerald. But You're right. you guys understand how crazy that shit is? Like, just that they even did that and that Legends Arceus exists and that BDSP exists and that they were, dude, what, what's the di what was the distance between those two games? Like, two months? Two, two months. Two months? Think about that. BDSP was a mainline game. Legends was a mainline game. They released two months between each other. That is freaking insane. Like, it's 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 insane, man. Uh, Ruffo, are you gonna are you gonna upload your Pokemon Day twenty twenty one live stream to your uh, to your bot channel? Uh, we're gonna be uploading that to Poke Forward. So don't worry about that. You're gonna see that on Poke Forward. Um, but what I'm saying is that they went nuts. Okay, they went crazy for twenty twenty one's. Pokemon Day. So we are sitting here talking about, oh, DLC, this and that. Who the fuck knows what they're going to do? Okay. I do remember Ku say that to, uh, I, it was like around New Year's of last year. He was like, look forward to 2023's Pokemon projects with a S at yeah. the end. Yeah. So that, that, that could imply a, a lot exactly. more than what we're thinking. I mean, listen, that's the thing. We're talk, we're thinking about we're thinking very narrow-minded because we know that the DLC is most likely gonna happen, right? But like, who knows what the heck else they have in their back pockets just ready to like swing out their fucking revolvers and be like ba boom, you know? Like you have we have no idea. We have no context for what might happen. We have no idea what they are cooking up in the back in their in their crackpot and shit, dude. Like I have no no clue. But that's also what makes Honestly, it more exciting. Yeah, it, it's terrifying though, because I I fear. I remember when BDSP was announced. Yep. I I had I had like this like weird like I I don't, I don't think I've ever smiled with that much like disgust. Like if that makes any disgust? sense, I, I, I was what like, the fuck? smile. I, I was like. It, I was like grinning. You, you know, you know, like when you get when you get like a gift and you don't like it, but you're just like this. I love it. Like you know. Yeah, I'm so gonna do that face now. On camera. Yeah, like, like, it's like, so, like somebody bakes you a cake and like they they put salt instead of sugar. Like you you eat it and you're just like, oh, I, like you, you don't want you don't want to say it's bad because you don't want to hurt your feelings, but you're like, oh, this looks so good. I was like that where I, I was obviously disappointed, but I was like, it's the remake that everybody asked for, you know, something like that. But then we got Legends, and I remember seeing the initial reveal, and I was like, this is scary. For the for the sheer fact, I, I remember like all the lag in the trailer, and I was like, "Yeah, it's like." Well, yeah, that's that's I true. Don't, but I but then I the game excited. got better. I was fucking I, excited. I just didn't even give a shit about anything. For me, just the fact that I could see a Pokemon game that clearly looked open world, and that that like where the battles were not in you know a separate battle screen and shit, and were actually in world in engine, like 
that shit was crazy to me. And the fact that I there remember, were two mainline games announced at the same time. I, 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 no, I remember watching your video like the day before or during that when that was happening. I think it was like you and Arrow and some other people in a live yeah. stream. And like the website leaked on Reddit. Yeah, 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 yeah it leaked. Oh yeah. my God, dude. And I couldn't show it. And I didn't say it. Like I was hiding it because I also had some stuff in private that people sent me. And I was just being quiet about it. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God, if this is real, if this is real, guys, I can't show this, but oh my God, oh my freak, I was losing my mind, dude, I was losing my I remember, shit. <laughs> I remember seeing it, and I remember, like, saving it to my phone, and I was like, holy crap, this is real, I was like, so, are, and I remember, uh, that there were, like, people that had, like, snippets of the information that were sharing, they were like, there is no Gen 4 remakes, we get prequels instead, and I was like, what? And then we got BDSP, which nobody yeah. saw BDSP coming, until, like, uh, some people were like a few hours or so before the presents were like they're like really ugly chibi version of Brilliant Diamond and or that Diamond and Pearl yeah, that you're gonna that, see. That was a bit disappointing, but I think I was just caught up in in the excitement of Legends that I didn't give a fuck. Like I just which, which is much. I I think that's what they wanted you to they wanted yeah, you to get yeah. excited for it. Yeah, but like so. still, just uh, I I'm I still fear that uh that. Black and white, because black and white is my favorite. Like Gen Five is my favorite Gen, so I fear that it's gonna look like that. But I do remember. I don't know if this is true. If they do source out Ilka, I do remember Ilka switching to Unreal Engine versus Unity. Yeah. After the whole BDSP debunkle, like mm -hmm. th their company said that they were switching to Unreal Engine after that. Okay. Not because of BDSP. They're just like we're just gonna. Uh, we're just gonna you know, up our ante and we're going to be, because I think that One Piece game that was made by them, Ilka made that crazy look. And I don't, I don't know if, if you ever seen I've the seen One it, Piece I've game, but it, like, I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, Ilka made that. And I think that was made in Unreal Engine, Yeah, definitely. which is, they if said it, it's going to be it like, it looks their, like lit, usually it's Unreal Engine. Yeah, like they that they say they're gonna be using Unreal Engine uh, going forward. So if they decide to uh, use Unreal Engine and plus, uh, I, I saw that the reason why they were chibi was because they were copying BDSP's like sprite format back then, mm -hmm. which I guess that that that's okay because when it came to black and white, black and white sprite format was more like that they they had like more proportions, like you can actually see like a, a little torso with the black and white sprites and stuff. They didn't look like little Funko Pops. They they look like Funko Pops with a twist or something like that. So okay. the Gen Five remakes. I feel like they the characters would look better mm -hmm. because they'll they'll they they won't look yeah because I don't know because they 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 are generally like if you look at them compared to the Gen Four characters just originally they are more tall and shit and they're tall and they have I, more details. I'm thinking them being more in the style of the Oras ones. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, kind of Oras esque, so to say. Like, Actually, I no, I I I'll, I'll prefer uh, if they, if they look like Let's Go. That would, I mean, that would be that would be the best. That would be the best. Yeah. Because out of all the remakes, Let's Go looks the best, hands down. Yeah, and plus all the all the characters, like yeah, while they're all chibi, they all have different proportions. Like I don't know if you remember this, but remember how AZ looked in X and Y? Like how he he looked he like everybody was chi chibi, and then AZ was like this really awkward tall 3D model that stood out with the other ones. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's true. Like he he. Man. He looked really weird because of the fact that he was like immortal and was like eight feet tall or whatever. And he, he was just like this super tall <laughs> guy. Looked, he, I'm just looking at a picture right now of like uh, Caleb or whatever, like the X and Y character, just standing yeah. behind like AZ and it's like, it's just got like this chubby chibi face. Meanwhile, AZ's got like this rugged ass, like realistic looking, you know, like design rugged body rugged long ass hair dude like, what the fuck <laughs> yeah like he, he he looked out of place which is which is the the point because he's like immortal or whatever but he he yeah. was really really funny looking compared to the he looks like he belongs in let's go essentially is what i'm trying yeah. to say well i mean at the end of the day like i don't think you have to worry about gen 5 just yet my guy because gen 5 is is still far away i think I yeah think it, gen 5 it's is, we're, we're still like that, that's we're still in the mysteries. Yeah, we're we're still in the mysteries of uh, Gen Gen Nine with this 
imaginary yeah. time traveling. This 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 game, this game has like Final Fantasy levels of like plot oh, convolute, yeah. <laughs> convoluted, and it's like because one 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 minute we're like like I don't know about you, but for me personally, one minute I'm like so convinced that these paradoxes are from the actual future or past, and then the next minute I'm like they're fake. So I'm I'm not sure anymore at this point. I mean, I'm gonna be real. I know what's happening next, and that's Johto. No, no questions about it. No, no. Oh, one hundred percent. One hundred thousand percent. It is Johto. One thousand percent. My question though is, what kind of Johto? Are we gonna get let's go type, like a let's go type Johto game? Are we gonna get a straight up remake of a Johto game? Are we gonna get a crystal type game of Johto? Are we gonna get a like Legends type game of Johto? What exactly is gonna be? No clue. When exactly it's gonna be? Like the exact timing, time frame, whatever. If it's gonna be a game this year and a game next year, no clue. Okay, I I am totally blind on this shit. I personally think it's gonna be next year most likely. You know, twenty twenty three is gonna be for oh sorry twenty twenty four is gonna be for Johto. But again, we'll have to wait and see because a lot of shit can happen. Okay, a lot of stuff, a lot of possible games, IDs, and stuff that they can throw out there are 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 in the in the the ballpark, so to say. But uh, yeah, I think that pretty much summarizes up what we expect to see. Uh, Cap, yeah. do you have any, any additions, or is that about it? No, I like like you said. I really do hope that next game is Jodo because Jodo was my personal. It was. It's not my it, like. It, it's it's my second favorite because it was my first Pokemon game. Like I got Heart and Gold Soul Silver, and yeah, I I remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I put so much like so many hours in the Soul Silver alone that like. There, there were times where I, I would be playing black and white or black two and white two and, and would like still come back to uh Heart and Gold Soul Silver. My my favorite moment as a kid was looking up how to look uh, open that one door in the ruins of Alf that I don't think could be open. Mm-hmm. But it was like uh I don't, I don't know if you know I'm talking about, but like in the ruins of Alf, there was yeah, that one you. door that yeah, the, the one you can like serve to. I remember looking up how to open that and believing every like game FAQs like oh fake. yeah i know dude i i used to do that for like finding like especially for like back when i played ruby and shit like getting the reggies and shit and i was like how the fuck can i do these puzzles man like a friend would show me in school like here's a video like you can check out how to do it and and oh dude yeah heart goes so silver though still remain as my personal favorites like they are they they are my personal favorite games of all time for pokemon with legends Arceus being probably second place i would say because i think legends Arceus is just fantastic fucking um, because it gives me that, that similar feeling to, to what I got from, um, gives me a similar feeling to what I got from, from, uh, Heart Gold Soul Silver, right? Like kind of like the, that mystery feeling of the world. And that new- that's what Johto, cause that, that's what Johto makes me, makes me feel dude. that whole region. It's just this mysterious kind of region. You know what I mean? With weird shit, with the unknown and everything. It's like, I just love that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Right. We'll see what happens. Right. Well, most likely Johto. But we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for watching the podcast side of this. We're going to be ending the episode right here. So thank you all for watching us. Uh, check out the Poke Forward channel um, as per usual, which is, you know, I mean, you're going to be watching this on the Poke Forward channel as a VOD. So make sure to subscribe. Uh, we're trying to get to that thousand subs. And uh, yeah, check out, of course, Cam. His channel is going to be linked down below as well in the VOD. So check out Cam's channel. Go if you want to see some sick Pokemon, Nintendo content, all that kind of stuff. It's all going to be over there. Give my boy some love. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it. Thank you all for watching, guys.